Welcome to the teaching ministry of Rev. Daryl Baker, pastor of Christian Faith Fellowship. Pastor Baker is fulfilling the call of God on his life to preach the Word of God without compromise. Raising up disciples who through faith in God will have a powerful impact on our world. May you be blessed through the message that Pastor Baker has to share with you today. May God's very best be yours. And the title of our message is called God's Recipe for, he- for Life and Health. God's Recipe for Life and Health. Anybody recognize what that symbolizes, that little tin right there? Christmas. Christmas. Thank you, Donna. Praise the Lord. Uh, home for the holidays. That would be Christmas. Thanksgiving. Uh, years ago, I don't know, because I always say years ago, I could have been, uh, honestly, I don't have that great a memory mentally wise. Could have been eight years ago. Could have been 10 years ago. I don't know exactly. But somewhere around 10 to 12, 8, 9, 10 years ago, uh, all of a sudden at Christmas time one year, I get a care package from my mom. Of course, my mom would always send us a little box, you know, with some stuff in it, you know, little Christmas presents and stuff like that. So I get this box this one year, though, and this one year, guess what was in it? A cookie tin. And I could tell it wasn't a store-bought. So I knew the moment I saw it, there got to be something good in there that my mom has made. Because this was the first time that I'd actually received something like that from my mom for Christmas, other than the other things that she would normally send. So I opened it up, you know, and here's some of her old, you know, chocolate chip cookies and, and some of her uh, uh, sugar cutout cookies, etc. But I noticed this really weird-looking cookie in there that I'd never, ever seen before. And that's what it looks like. And I'm like, wow, what is that thing, man? I called it a waffle cookie. Yeah. I said, wow, Kathy, I don't know what these are. I don't know what the heck they are. It looks like some kind of a waffle cookie. Kind of reminds me of sort of like a waffle cone, you know, like you'd get for a waffle uh, for an ice cream cone. And I, I looked at it, I said, wow. And I took a little bite of one. And I said, aha, <laughs> took another little bite, took another little bite. I liked them. And guess what? Before long, they were all gone. Probably within less than a day, they were, they were disappeared. They were history, man. I told Kathy, you can have chocolate chip cookies. I said, if you, but I'm taking these right here, man. These, <laughs> I'm eating these up. There wasn't a lot in there. So I ate them all up. Well, guess what I started looking forward to then every Christmas? Because all of a sudden next year, here comes a box. Here comes a little tin. And I start digging through there for one thing. Where is the waffle cookie? I want the waffle cookie, man. And they're actually called Pazelles. Anybody ever heard of them? No. Pazelles. That's what the actual name is. Or you can just call them a waffle cookie. So for several years, man, I would look forward to that care package to show up because that's the only time I'd get them. As at Christmas time, I'd never seen them before. Loved them, man. Great taste for me. I loved them. But I'd never get them any other time. So I couldn't wait for that package to show up. And then one Christmas, nothing. <laughs> no waffle cookies. No cookies at all. I'm like, wow, what's the deal, man? My mom must have made me not feeling very good or something like that, right? So I kind of let her off, you know, gave her a little slack that year. Next year, nothing. I'm like, what's going on, man? I don't get it. And finally, three years after that, guess what showed up for Christmas? An actual box that had an iron, a waffle iron in it that is a Pazell iron. And the recipe for the cookies. So I no longer got the cookies. I got the recipe to make them and the iron to make them. So I called mom. I go, what's going on? I don't get it. She said, well, a few years back, I lost my recipe. And I couldn't find it anywhere. I tried some others. None of them tasted like the recipe I had. So finally, I just got frustrated with it. I threw my iron out. got rid of it. And all of a sudden, several years later, I came across the recipe. I knew you loved them. But honestly, son, I don't want to take time to make them anymore. So I just bought you an iron and sent you the recipe with the iron. Now, that iron's been sitting around for a long time in a box, brand new. I haven't, I, it's been like probably four or five years, man. It's just sat. And every Christmas, I keep thinking, I need to make those puzzles. I need to, but guess what? I lost the recipe. Oh. Couldn't find the recipe. So, so I couldn't make them. You know, and I wanted it. Oh, man, I want those puzzles, man. So I, I sent my mom a note this week thinking about this series. I said, Mom, do you still have that recipe by any chance? I think it's on my computer. Let me go look. And she found it and sent me the recipe. Friday, I hot-footed it down to Albertsons, man, and got all the ingredients and came home Friday night. And guess what I made? They're as good as mom's. Do you know why? 
Do you know why they're as good as mom's? I didn't add anything to the recipe. I didn't take anything out. But you know what? I put everything in there exactly as it said. I followed the directions just like it said. And golly, Gomer, guess what I came out with? I came out with a pizzelle just as good as what my mom used to send me for Christmas. God gave us a recipe in the Bible for life and health. Why are so many Christians not walking in? And the term life there, by the way, if anybody would like to try one of Pastor's Pazels, these are for you. Yep. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave them with Joshua for right now because you'll be, you'll be nibbling on them during service. I don't want you doing that. So you see Joshua afterwards if you want to try one. Praise God. But I'm going to tell you something. The only reason they came out the way they did and taste like mom's is because I didn't take anything out of the recipe. I didn't add anything extra to the recipe. I put everything in there just like the recipe said. And the interesting, she said, I lost my recipe. I tried others. They never tasted very good. I'm going to tell you something. You and I have the ability to walk in life as God has it. Amen. That's what it means to walk in the life of God. It's life as God has it. On this earth. In the New Testament under our covenant, it's called Zoe. It's called Zoe, the life of God. And health. Watch this. Proverbs 4.20. My son, give attention to my words. Incline your ear to my sayings. Do not let them depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart. Why? Because they are life. They are life to those who find them. And health to how much? How much? All their flesh. Now, I'm going to tell you something. This recipe hasn't changed. It's now established through Jesus Christ under the new covenant, but it hasn't changed. Right here in these verses, Proverbs 4, 20 through 22, God just gave you the recipe for life as God has it and health in all of your flesh. Why are Christians not walking in it? Evidently, they're actually missing some of the ingredients. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or they're not mixing them the way the Bible said to. Or they're adding to them. And therefore, they're not getting that result. This is an absolute. This is a guarantee. This isn't a maybe. This is a guarantee. My son, that's talking about children of God. Give attention to my words. Incline your ear to my sayings. Do not let them depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart. Why? They are life to those who find them and health to all their flesh. This Old Testament, Pastor. Yeah, but guess what? Jesus in the New Testament said, I've come to give you life and that more abundantly. And in that life covenant, we also have healing for our entire body. Amen. So this, this whole recipe for life and health has not changed. It's just shifted over to the focus of what's now true in the New Testament. But the recipe is the same. That's the reason God didn't change it, because it still works. We cannot blame anybody else on the planet. Not your mama, not your papa. Not your babies, not your husband, not your wife, not your pastor. Not your church. Amen. Not your boss, not the world, not the devil, not demons. We can blame nobody else. If we're not walking in the life as God has it and health in all of our flesh, guess what? We're not walking out what the recipe teaches. Because just like those pizzelles, I took every single element. I mixed it identical to what was on the recipe. I walked through every single step, one after the other. And guess what? They came out exactly like my mom used to make. Because I did what? I followed those directions to the letter. If you will follow these directions to the letter, get all four of these ingredients working in your life, guess what you're going to walk in? Zoe. Life as God has it. And health in all your flesh. So child of God, if you're interested in getting this working for your life, I would highly encourage you to learn these four elements, find out what those ingredients are, start doing them the way the Bible says, and it will work for you. I don't care who you are. Now, guess what? Those pizzelles didn't just pop into into being. It took work. It took effort to get all that together. It took effort to, first of all, go and find all those ingredients. It takes effort for you to go and find these ingredients. Mm -hmm. Then I had to bring them all home. 
Then I had to get them all measured out. Then I had to mix them all and do what those ingredients are, are, are told to be done with. But once I did, man, and got them in the, in the little oven and did exactly as it said, and the little green light came on and I popped up the lid, guess what? There was the pizzelle. And so can it be for you, child of God. I said, so can it be for you. The first one we already covered on Wednesday night. There's four ingredients to the very life of God and the health of God. The first one, and as simple as these sound, you need to fully understand what they are. The first one is found in verse 20. Give attention to my what? Words. Words. Now, that's the new King James. Attention. King James says, attend to my words. And when you look at the word here that the new King James defined as attention... The better translation is attend because the key that's being spoken of here is priority. Priority. Number one, the very first ingredient to life and health is what? You must attend to God's word. You must attend to God's word. Wait a minute. Under the new covenant, especially the epistles. Especially the epistles. What are epistles? Book of Acts through book of Revelation. Letters. The word epistle means letters. All right, we have Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, Gospels. And they tell us the good news. They tell us why Jesus came. They show the life that he lived, what he did. He revealed the Father to us. Mm-hmm. Right? Because yeah. he said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Yeah. But if all you had was the four Gospels to read, you would not know who you are in Christ. And you would not know what you have under this new covenant. Yes. You wouldn't know. Because the Bible tells us all those things are revealed to us in the epistles. Acts through Revelation. For you and I to walk in Zoe life, we need to understand who Jesus is. Because if we learn who Jesus is, guess who we learn about? Us. Because I'm one spirit with Him. Did Jesus walk in the life of God? Did Jesus walk in the health of God? You're not going to do that without getting to know what obviously He Himself made you to be. You can't know who you are without reading the epistles. Because the epistles tell you all the in Him, in Christ, in whom verses. So there's two things that you got to recognize that are dealing with attending to God's Word. One, I must focus on the epistles and learn who I am in Christ. i got to go through Acts to Revelation to find out who I am. To walk in Zoe life, to walk in health, you got to know who you are. Two, got to find out what I've got. Yes. i got to find out what I have in Christ. Yes. Remember 2 Corinthians told us chapter 1. It told us there, I believe it's verse 20. It says, all the promises of God yes. are what? Yes. yes. So every promise we have from God in the New Testament, if we want to know whether we can walk in that or not, what's the answer? The answer is yes, to which we give our amen. amen. That's why we ask you to amen in church. Amen. Not just to say something. That's right. Amen means so be it for me. And when you see those promises and find out what they are and who you are, and I have that available to me, that's mine in Christ, what do you say? Amen. Amen. So be it for me. So understand, attending to God's Word is priority. Meaning what? If you're not going to make the Word of God the priority of your life, you're not going to walk in life. You're not going to walk in health. Because that Word also has within it the ability to heal it is a medicine. Proverbs 4.22. Notice in verses 20 and 21, he refers to four different things. But then in verse 22, what did he say? For they, his word, they are life. They are health. What if the word's not a priority? You're not getting into life. You're not getting into health. Isn't that right? Yes. I gave you this verse. We showed you others. You have to go back and re, you know, re-listen to Wednesday night's teaching. But the point we gave you out of this verse was John chapter 1 verse 4 talking about Jesus who is referred to as the Word there. He, the Word, did what? He, the Word, is life and the light of men. He is life. So where's that life found? In the Word. So there's no way you're going to walk in the life of God and in health with God if you don't make the Word of God a priority in your life. I like the word attend here because it's like something you have to attend to. So, uh, example, if you work a job, let's say you work Monday through Friday. I know some don't, but I'm just going to use that as an analogy. Let's say you work Monday through Friday and you have to be at work at 9 o'clock. I remember when I was uh, uh, graduated from high school working at Motorola. Uh, My brother got me a job there. I was working in a department, uh, actually taking care of an entire uh, stocking room for parts for a major part of uh, Motorola's actual uh, 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 bays where they worked and made the 64K RAM chip at the time. Now, I got bumped out of my job due to layoffs. I got put in a janitorial position. I didn't like it. 
Because I didn't like it, guess what? I got lazy. And Motorola is very strict on their rules. If you don't attend to your job, you lose it. And I lost my job. It's the only job I've ever lost. The only job I've ever been fired from. But I got so lazy because I got so mad. I got so mad at them taking this job away from me that I like. And I got bumped out of my job because of somebody else in another department due to layoffs. They got transferred over into my job because of seniority. And therefore, I got bumped down to a lower job out of a job that I loved doing. And the point being that I shouldn't have been that way. I just took a bad attitude about it. So guess what I didn't do? I didn't attend to my work anymore. Motorola had a strict policy. If you're late four times in one quarter, you're out the door. We don't care who you are. We don't care what your qualifications are. We don't care how long you work for us. You could have worked for them for 25 years. Does not matter. That's a rule at Motorola. Now, they understand, of course, unless you have a definite, you know, plausible excuse, you know, like a death in the family or illness or whatever. We're not talking about that. We're just talking about you showed up late four times in one quarter, you're out the door. Now, I had shown up late three times. Now, this is, this is pre-Christian days, all right? So this is B.C. days for pastor. If you don't know B.C., that's before Christ. I was a sinner. I would go out at nights, most weekday nights. I was out at the bars. I was out at, you know, uh, bars dancing and drinking. So I'd stay out till they'd close. At that time, that was usually 2 o'clock in the morning. And then I'd go home, and I'd get a few hours of sleep and get up and be to work at 9 o'clock. Well, uh, I've been late three times already in one quarter, and, and the next time I was late was a couple days later. I had stayed out all night the night before. I showed up 10 minutes late, walked in the door. My supervisor said, go get your, because we're in a clean room environment, go get your stuff on and go inside and start to work. And I said, see, they're not going to fire you, man. <laughs> they ain't going to do it. Well, guess what they were doing while I was working? They were preparing my discharge papers. <laughs> Because I was in a secure area. They were preparing all this paperwork I'd have to sign that I would not give away their secrets, what I saw. I would not take pictures of anything and take it outside that room. They were the only one making the 64K RAM chip at the time. So I was in a high, very high clearance, high security environment. I had to have a background check done to be able to work there in that area. So all of a sudden, about two hours later, my boss calls me into her office. I think she's just going to slap me on the hand, you know, tell me you can't keep doing this, Daryl, you know, like she did the three times before. No, she walks me right in, sets me down, says, take your stuff off. I did. Says, I'll tell you what, we got some paperwork here for you to sign. As soon as we do that, see this security guard right here? Yeah, he's going to escort you to your locker. You're going to get everything out of it. He will escort you to the front door and make sure you don't come back. You're fired. My jaw hit the ground. I said, you're kidding. We told you we have a rule. If you're late four times in a quarter, it doesn't matter who you are. Motorola goes by the rules. You're out the door. Guess what I didn't do? I didn't, do it. I didn't attend to what was a priority for that time in my life. So I lost my job. Most Christians are losing out on life and health because the word's not a priority to them. And it's one of the ingredients. That when you mix them together, woo, come on, that's too much work. Okay, just live without the, the life as God has it. Live without the health as God has it. I'll tell you what, it's a lot better to have the life. Amen. It's a lot better to have the health. Because when you live in the Word, things become easier, not harder. Amen. Can I get a better amen? amen? So understand, number one, if you do not give attention to the Word, if you don't attend to it, if that's not a priority, think of it like I'm going somewhere with an appointment, right? What if I was headed to work and knew I can't stop anywhere? i got to get there. And all of a sudden, a buddy calls me up and says, hey, I need you to stop and get me something. I don't have time. i got to attend to this. Because if I don't, I'm going to be late. We should treat the Word of God that way. Amen. So all these distractions in life, child of God... All these distractions in life that want to keep you from the Word, what should you do? You say, uh-uh. Nope. I got an appointment. I got something I need to attend to. You know why? Because I like walking in life as God has it. It's worth it. It's worth the effort. Come on, church. I like walking in health. Who likes walking in sickness and disease? Raise your hand right now. Come on. Let me see it. Come on. Let me see somebody shout about walking in sickness and disease. woo I just want some more of that flu bug, Pastor. I just want some more of that cold. I want some more of that pain and suffering in my body. No. Who wants to walk in health? Yeah. Who wants to walk in abundant life? Yeah. You got to have the ingredients. Yeah. You got to have the ingredients so the recipe doesn't work. You leave an ingredient out, it won't taste the same. Right. Right. You don't get the results. Aren't you glad God made it? Yeah. Aren't you glad he made us a recipe to walk in it? Yeah. Come on, church. 
So I'm telling you, you got to do what? Attend to God's Word. It has to become a priority, especially what? The epistles. See, I got asked a question in our, uh, which by the way, you can still be turning your questions in if you want me to answer a question in your own personal sermons things. Drop them off back there in that back box back there if you got a question about the Bible or something. But I got asked this question. Why do you not teach out of the Old Testament? Now, I didn't do this for this reason, but did you notice what we're teaching out of today? The Old, Testament. Old Testament. I do. But mostly I teach out of the New Testament. You know why? That's our covenant. That's what we now have as a covenant with God. We need to read the whole Bible. But I promise you, I agree with Brother Hagin. The Bible says imitate those who through faith and patience inherit the promises. You look at every great man of faith we reference. And every great woman of faith that we reference that walked in the life and the health of God. I guarantee you what? Guess what you're going to find? You're going to find somebody who lived in the New Testament. They learned about their covenant with God. Because you know what the Old Testament won't teach you? It won't teach you who you are in Christ. And it won't show you what you have in Christ. Only found in the epistles. It's the only place you can find that. Now the Old Testament helps us to know God. Helps us to relate to each other. Helps us to understand some things about life. Not telling you it won't. But it doesn't show you who you are. It doesn't show what you have. The New Testament does that. And not just the Gospels. Because that's really the life of Jesus. And you should learn it. And He shows us some stuff. And He helps us to know things we should do. How to live. But it still doesn't tell me who I am. The epistles do. Can I get a better amen? Yeah. So that's number one. You got to do what? Attend to God's word, especially the epistles. Proven by the Bible, John 1, 4, life is in the word. Yes. Health is in the word. So if I'm not in the word, how do I expect to get life and health? It's got to start there. Yeah. Amen. All right. Now, let's go to number two today. Go to John 8. That wasn't all introduction, so don't get nervous. Oh, my gosh. He just got done with the introduction. No. Wasn't all introduction. Go to John 8. I'm going to show you the second one. Each service, I'm going to give you one of the four ingredients. And explain how they work. See, one of the gifts of a pastor that's different than, let's say, an apostle, although apostle could do this to a degree, but different than an apostle or a prophet or an evangelist. Now, a teacher could because there are gifted teachers in the body, but a pastor has to be a teacher. We know this because in the, in the prophecy of Jeremiah 3.15, God talked about giving us shepherds. In Jeremiah 3.15, he said, there's coming a time that I'm going to give you shepherds. I'm going to give the body of Christ shepherds. Why? He said, they're going to feed you with knowledge and understanding. You know, a lot of people kind of make fun of me sometimes about how I go into detail. I'll tell you what, if your pastor doesn't do that, you better go find another pastor. Because that's getting understanding of what you now have knowledge of. Amen. If all you had was knowledge of what the Bible says, but not understanding how to apply it, it couldn't help you. Right. That's why I go into such detail. I don't want you to just know what it says. What good is that if I don't tell you how to do it? Amen. What good is that if I don't help you understand how to live it? Amen. But see, that's what a shepherd's gifted to do. Now, I guarantee you, anybody in a pulpit doesn't have that gifting on their life. Jesus did not anoint them to be a shepherd. Doesn't mean they may not have some other calling, but you got to be able to teach people with knowledge and understanding of the Word of God. Amen? Amen? And that's the gift of a true teacher, which a pastor has to have. John chapter 8, number 2, write this down. I could have showed it to you before we left Proverbs 4, but you can go back and reference it again. Write this down. Number two, the second thing he told us, I'll, I'll quote it. Don't write this down. I'm going to quote what the, what the verse said. The verse said that you and I must attend to his word and, number two, don't write this down. He said we must incline our ear to his sayings. Here's number two. You must give God's word your undivided attention. You must give God's word your undivided attention. I'm going to explain that. You must give God's word your undivided attention. So, number one, I need to attend to it. Giving it my undivided attention is a step up from that. It's not the same thing. It's not the same phrase. Attend to my word, incline your ear to my sayings. That's different. That's different. Just recently, Kathy and I, we were watching an a old western. It was actually, uh, I, don't, I don't know the name of this one. It was kind of a newer take on, uh, you know, uh, Wyatt Earp's life, you know, and the battle at the OK Corral and all that. And if you kind of know the story after, you know, uh, what actually happened, excuse me, what led up to the battle at the OK Corral, you know, is here's this other family ticked off at the Earps and they're wanting to kill him. And, and they wind up actually uh, shooting and injuring one of his brothers and they kill one of his brothers. And the brother that got shot that died, all the movies I've seen, of course, I don't know how true these are. I've never checked into the actual account to see how true they are. But all the ones I've seen about this, he was actually shot while he was playing pool. They were like in a bar, pool hall area type of deal. He's playing pool. Guy shoots him through a back window and he falls onto the pool table. 
and he's dying. Now, while he's dying, he's trying to say something to his brother Wyatt. But Wyatt can't hear him. You know why? Too much distraction around. So you know what he does? Have you ever seen this in a movie? He walks over to him and he leans down with his ear. And he inclines his ear. He gets it real close so he can hear what he's saying. That's what that verse means. Because what you're doing is you're getting rid of all the other distractions of life. And you're inclining your ear to that word. What does it say? What is it telling me? Who is it telling me I am? So you can't do that without giving it your undivided attention. If you don't give the word your undivided attention, you're not hearing everything it says. Right. It's like a conversation you're having with somebody. Mm -hmm. I know none of you husbands and wives ever do this because Kathy and I never have. <laughs> you sat there and had a conversation with them. And honestly, they'll tell you, you're not listening to me. Yes, I am. What do you think I've been doing the whole time I've been sitting here? And you really haven't because you didn't give their undivided attention. If you don't give a person your undivided attention when they're talking to you, like when your pastor is sharing the Word of God with you, you're not hearing what God's saying. I've told them now, rule of thumb, all these blinds on this side, don't anybody ever open these blinds over here during service. You keep them closed, and we're going to get blinds for this door here as well. You know why? Because every time somebody walks on that porch during the service, and I'm standing up here, you know what everybody's head does? <laughs> you're not giving me your undivided attention. That's going to hurt you. God has something to say to you. Amen. I don't, I don't need your attention. It's the, the word you're giving your attention to. Yeah. Amen. Right? But I'm going to tell you something. How many of you have ever saw that movie? Guy's sitting at a table. He's with another gal, and there's a TV up in the background. And it's got some kind of sports going on on it, you know? And she's talking away, and he's just like this, glued to the TV, just memorized by the TV, you know? And he's just going, uh-huh, uh-huh, yeah, uh-huh. Did he hear anything she said? No. no. You know why? He didn't turn the noise off in the background. He didn't get rid of the distraction. Child of God, you cannot experience life and health without giving your full undivided attention to the Word of God. Let me explain further. John chapter 8. Do I have your attention yet? Yes. John chapter 8, 31. Watch this promise. Jesus said to the Jews who believed in Him, say, I believed in Him. If you abide, live in my Word, you are my disciples indeed. What if you're not living in the Word? You're not a disciple. Be born again, not a disciple. If you abide in my Word, you're my disciples indeed. What will happen? Verse 32, you shall know the truth. You shall know the truth. truth and the truth shall Amen. set you free. What's the truth? God's Word. All right. So think about life as God has it. Life as God has it. Does life as God has it include me worrying about anything no. at all? Should I have any worry in my life no. as a child of God? No. Well, that's ridiculous, Pastor. There's no way we can live without worry. Jesus did. Amen. And you can have life as God has it. The reason you might be living with worry is because you are not mixing the ingredients right. to have life as God has it. Should you have fear of anything in this life? No. Should you fear demons? No. Humans? No. Should you fear disease? No. Sickness? No. Should you fear anything of this life? No. You should not. You should only fear one thing, and that's God. Amen. You should have an absolute awesome awe and reverence for God. But you should not be afraid of anything in this life. Right. Isn't that right? Yes. Wouldn't that be life as God has it? Yes. All right, so how do I get free from the fear? How do I get free from the worry? Should I have stress in my life? No. Should I be stressed out no. over my job? Over my business, no. over my money, no. over my family, no. over my health. No. no, I should not be stressed out because stressed out would not be life as God has it. Isn't that correct? Amen. Well, I, I mean, come on, Pastor. How are you going to experience all that? What frees you from all that? The truth. Yes. The truth. If you know the truth, 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 it will set you free. What's it mean to know the truth, Pastor? Verse 31 gives you a clue. There's a little clue planted away in verse 31 people miss. That verse 32 then unveils what knowing truth is all about. And it's in that little word abide. Abide. If you abide in my word. Guess what that word abide means? Become one with. Become one with. When you become one with the word and the word becomes one with you. Meaning what? I think the way the Word thinks because that Word now has been poured into me. 
I'm one with the Word. If you become one with the Word, what are you going to know? The truth. You're going to know the truth. What's the truth going to do? I like to say it this way, all right? It's going to free you from everything that's trying to keep you from the life as God has it Amen. and health in all your flesh. Not some of your flesh, all your flesh. Can I get a better amen? amen? Now, I'm going to tell you something. I hear this from believers all the time. I know because they, I have conversations with them. And people tell me, now, I'm going to tell you, Pastor, I believe in God. And all of a sudden, within 10 minutes of the conversation of them telling me they're believing God, they start talking about something coming up. Well, I'm not really worried about that, but I am kind of worried about this. Then you're not believing God. Because worry and faith don't mix. They're like water and oil. Where worry is present. Do you know the Bible teaches us worry is a sin? What's sin? Missing the mark. If I'm missing the mark that God set, guess what I'm not going to walk in? Zoe. I'm not going to walk in life and health. But thank God I get to. Amen. Woo! Thank God I get to. Yes. Like a better amen. amen. You ought to be excited. You know what? It's like I said the other night. I would anticipate every Christmas for the Pazels to show up in that box. I couldn't wait, man. And when I opened that box, all of a sudden I could smell them. I'm like, yeah, praise God. We're going to be partaking of some good cookies today. That's what the life of God and health of God should smell like to you. Amen. Yeah, man, come on. You kidding me? I can smell that life. Woo, I can smell that health. I want some of that. Amen. I'm going to get these, get, these, uh, get these ingredients together, man, and get this recipe cooked. Amen. Make it work for me in Jesus' name. But it won't. If you don't incline your ear to what God says, how do you do that? You got to become one with the word to become one with the word. You must incline your ear to God's word. You must give it your undivided attention. How do you accomplish that pastor? You got to get rid of every contrary voice. You got to get rid of every contrary voice. You can't keep listening to all the junk of the world that's feeding you with everything that opposes God's word. And telling you everything opposite of what God's word says about you. And be listening to God's word at the same time and think you're giving God's word your undivided attention. If I give somebody in a conversation my undivided attention, am I listening to anybody else? No. How do you give the word undivided attention? You stop listening to anything else that goes contrary to that word. Wigglesworth did it. Hagen did it. Amy Sybil McPherson did it. Roy Hicks did it. Lester Sumrall did it. Should I go on? Many great men and women of God have done it. Amen. Not because they're ministers, folks. Because they wanted life and they wanted health. Amen. And they understood allowing those other things are robbing me. All those other things would not be what? Truth. Right. So anything that's not truth is what? An error. It's a lie. It's a deception. Where does that come from? Satan. Satan. What's he trying to do? Get me to fall for that. Do you understand that there are deceiving spirits all across the planet? They're around you all the time. You know I love this truth from my pastor. You know what deceiving spirits are not assigned to do? They're not trying to get you to speak a lie. They're trying to get you to believe one. Lying spirits aren't trying to get you to lie. They're lying to you to get you to believe one. That's their goal. By all these other means, by all these other things, they're trying to get you to believe a lie. Have you ever heard this statement? If you hear something long enough... You'll believe it's true. Look at our country today. Look at our country today. Look at people that are standing up for stuff that when you go and prove the facts of what actually is true, what they're believing can be proven to not be true. But they won't listen to you because they've heard the lies so long, they believe it no matter what. And God says of such people who will not hunger for truth, I will have to give them over to the strong delusion. I have no option because they won't listen to me. They won't listen to truth. But you and I, child of God, to listen to truth, what do we got to do? Give it our undivided attention. If you don't give the Word of God your undivided attention, guess what? You're not going to become one with the Word. Watch this, 2 Corinthians 10. Go quickly. Say, praise the Lord. God helping you all today? 2 Corinthians 10. Oh, come on. I'm excited about this series, man. This little four-part series, I'll tell you what. If you want life and health, this is it. This is how you get it. It's this simple. Four, four ingredients. So I'm attending to the Word. I'm making it a priority. But if I'm attending to it, but I'm not really hearing it, 
I'm not really giving my attention to it. So that'd be like me attending to Kathy that I would go sit down to hear a conversation with her, but I'm not really listening. I could be there in attendance, but I'm not really listening. That'd be like going to work. You attend to work. Okay, you go in the sense that you're there, but you don't work. Then you're not really what? You're not inclining yourself to doing what you're supposed to do. You're still going to lose your job. So you don't just show up. You got to do what? You got to hear what's being said. And when you know the truth, what will it do? Woo! Come on. Somebody get excited today. I'm tired of my church not being fired up. This kind of stuff should fire you up. Your woods what if this don't fire you up. To know if I know the truth. I can be free from worry. I can be free from fear. I can be free from stress. I can be free from demonic powers. I can be free from every lie and deception to rob my marriage, rob my kids, rob my health, rob my finances. I don't get excited about that. Oh, man, you ought to get excited about that. Well, you're just getting kind of mad, Pastor. No, I'm not. I'm getting fired up. Amen. Because this is good stuff. Yes, it is. It's like knowing, guess what, man? Tonight, I have homemade chicken soup waiting for me. <laughs> Miss Sylvia made me some homemade chicken soup. And it's waiting for me tonight after service, praise the Lord. So you see me disappear pretty quick. <laughs> after church tonight, you'll know why. Amen. You know why? I'm excited about that chicken soup. Yeah. Why are Christians not excited about life and health? Yeah. They need to shake themselves. Yeah. Come on, they need to wake themselves up a little bit. Amen. How to get fired up about this stuff. Say, this is worth chasing. Yes, is. This is worth going after. Yes, this is worth truly walking after in my life and chasing after every day. Yes, Can I get a better amen? amen. amen. 2 Corinthians 10, verse 4. You there? Say amen. amen. For the weapons of our warfare. Weapons of our warfare are not what? Carnal. So he's talking about some kind of a battle here. He's talking about some kind of battle that we're dealing with. Some kind of battle we're going through. Weapons of our warfare are not carnal, so we know it's not a fleshly battle. We know it's not a physical battle we're, we're fighting here. But, it, but notice this, those weapons we have for this battle are mighty in God. Yes. What do they do? Pull down stronghold. What's a stronghold? That lie that you believe because you heard it so long. Because you kept hearing it over and over and over again. And all of a sudden you got convinced it was true, but it's not. Yes. And now it has a stronghold on you. Yes. Well, guess what? You got weapons to destroy that. You got weapons that'll help get rid of that. But how do you do that? Watch this, verse 5. You must begin to do what? Casting down arguments Mm -hmm. and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, you must bring into captivity every thought. Bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of what? To the obedience of what? Well, how are you going to find out about that? New Testament. Uh How are you going to find out about that? Tend to the Word. Because when you attend to the Word, you find out what Christ did for you. When you tend to the word, you find out the authority he gave you. When you tend to the word, you find out the victory he's provided for you. You find out how to learn to walk in this authority. You learn, you learn how to walk in and exercise your authority as a child of God over these powers of darkness. You learn how to defeat sin. You learn how to defeat uh, sickness. You learn how to defeat disease. Yes, thank you. But guess what? The warfare is in your mind. The battle is in your mind. Because if we don't incline our ear, what we're hearing in our hearts to the word, guess what? Then we're going to continue to live by these lies. We're not going to know the truth and the truth therefore will not what? Set us free. What must you do, church, to give undivided attention to the word? Verse 5, you got to cast down every argument. That word argument means reasonings. So guess what, child of God? Quit trying to reason out the Bible. Quit it. What you read in the Bible, believe it. Amen. Period. Amen. Quit. To, I don't understand that. You're not going to understand most of what the Bible tells you in the way of knowledge naturally because there's spiritual truths. Mm-hmm. Healing is a spiritual fact. Right. Zoe life is a spiritual fact. Yeah, right. Salvation is a spiritual fact. But you don't get salvation because you understand how all that works. You got salvation because you believed it was true. That's right. You believed it was available. And if I put my faith in Jesus, I'd be born again. And guess what? It happened. You know why? Not because you reasoned it out and figured out how it works. Because you simply believe what he said about salvation. Mm -hmm. We got to do that about everything with the word of God. The problem, most Christians don't realize this. The problem with most believers is they don't understand Satan's using the warfare of their mind to reason them right out of every promise of God. 
They'll reason themselves out. Well, you know, I heard this the other day. Well, you know, I knew brother so-and-so. He loved the Lord. He prayed all of his life and he never got healed. You just reasoned yourself out of healing. You just reason yourself right out of the healing, right out of the health God has for you. And, you, and, and, and then you turn around and say, I know all the healing verses, but brother so-and-so. See, you're not giving your undivided attention to the word. Because you don't live by somebody else's experience. There ain't a verse for that in all the Bible. Well, why didn't they get healed? You ain't them. No one knows the heart of a man except the man himself. So you have no knowledge why. But to turn around and say God wouldn't heal them violates the Word of God. Right. Violates what Scripture teaches. Right. That'd be the same as saying, well, God didn't die for everybody to get born again. Yes, He did. Right. God didn't die to reconcile everybody in the world to Him. Yes, He did. There's nothing else He needs to do to accomplish that. That's already been fulfilled. Right? But if a person reasons out why that's not for them... They could know what the Bible says. There were people in Jesus' day, still today, who know what the Bible says, but they reason out why that's not for them. You know what's that called? That's called not giving the word your undivided attention. If you don't give your word the undivided attention, guess what? You're not going to know the truth. And the truth cannot free you. Can I get a better amen? amen. You got to get rid of every what? Reasoning. That's the word for argument. You got to cast them down. You got to cast it. Oh, they're going to come, folks. They're going to come. Bible says in the book of Proverbs, many plans in a man's heart, but it's the Lord's counsel that stands. Amen. So what do you do? Get rid of your plan. Hey, you want to know a better way to say this, to give God your undivided attention? Here's a better way to say it. Get rid of your opinion. Amen. Quit having an opinion. Right. Well, my opinion is we don't care what your opinion is. Amen. Your opinion doesn't free. The Bible doesn't say, and if you know Daryl Baker's opinion, it'll set you free. No, it doesn't. It says if you know the truth. Amen. If you know what the Bible says, it'll set you free. Too many Christians go by opinions. Hey, they go by theories. If a preacher gets up and says, well, my theory is, turn him off. I don't want to know his theory. I want theory. Theory is nothing but speculation. It's not knowledge of what the Word says. It's just what you think it says. I don't want to know what you think it says. I just want to know what the Word says. I just want to understand what the Word says. And if I have a childlike heart, I can receive the Word. Become like a dear child. Okay, if you're like a dear child, what does that mean? You can convince a child almost anything. You know why? They haven't been conditioned long enough to know any different. Amen. Well, treat the Bible that way. That's good. You want to enter the kingdom? You want to enter life? You want to enter health? Become like a dear little child. Just take it at face value. Take it for what it says. Sure, there might be things you read in the Old Testament. And again, you got to know that through the new that you don't understand. But I guarantee if you know the new, you'll see it in, tr in the truth of the light of what the Bible reveals reading the old. Can I get a better amen? amen. I'm going to tell you something. Everything God says about you, stop questioning it. Amen. Everything God says is yours, stop questioning it. Stop reasoning out why that's not for you. Yes. Much of what happens in believers' lives, it's not the devil stealing and killing and destroying. It's their own reasoning yes. that's robbing them. True. Stop reasoning out God's Word. Yes. Give it your undivided attention. Every argument and every what? High thing. Yes. What's that mean? Every high thing that exalts itself against what? The knowledge of God. Here's what he's saying. Anything that tries to come up above the word and say, well, I know. Here's how it sounds like in a conversation. This is what the high thing sounds like. You ready? Here's an example in a conversation of the high thing that you'll hear in a conversation. Well, I know the word says that. Here comes a high thing. Well, if the word says that, there should be no buts. Because if you let the butt in there, guess what's going to happen? Now you're going to come up with something you say is different than what the Word says. How about you just said the Bible says this, but, well, don't go to the butt. Mm -hmm. Stay with the Word. Amen. 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 That's getting rid of every high thing that tries to exalt itself against the knowledge of God's Word. What's that going to do, church? Rob you of the truth. Yes. Now listen, you, you got to get this down. You have to put away. You might want to write this down. You have to put away everything... Excuse me. Put everything away from your mind that contradicts God's word. You got to put away everything from your mind that contradicts God's word. If something comes to your mind that contradicts God's word, you got to put that away. You got to say, no, that's not true. And you got to quit listening to the sources of that. Amen. 
It's amazing how many Christians just watch all kinds of garbage and say, but it's just entertainment. No, it's not. It's called the devil taking advantage of your life. It doesn't mean you can't watch things that obviously don't have all that garbage going contrary to the word in it. But much of the modern stuff of entertainment today is going to teach you what? Homosexuality is acceptable. Adultery is okay. Come on. Premarital sex. What's the big deal? It's the 21st century. What does it matter if you smoke a little dope? It's legal in a lot of states now. On and on we could go. And you're going to watch stuff that's going to promote that, that's going to say it's acceptable and it's okay. People say, yeah, but you're just religious. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. I'm walking in Zoe. Amen. I have a relationship yes. with Zoe. I'm not religious. I got a relationship. I didn't get religion. I got liberty. Amen. I got freedom from all that junk. Yes. Amen. But you're not going to have both these things. You're going to be double-minded. Right. You're going to have both these things feeding you. And you think you're going to be, how can you be listening to two different forms of information and be giving God's word your undivided attention? You need to think of it this way. That's the same thing as me sitting in a room saying, I'm going to listen to Kathy. Joshua's going to talk. I'm going to try to listen to both at the same time. That's what Christians do when they come to the word, but they keep feeding on other stuff. You're letting two forms of communication in. That's not undivided attention. Amen. That's like the guy dying on the table. He's trying to talk to you, but you're up, you're so far away because you're everything else now around you is causing what disruption. You can't truly hear what they're saying. Incline your ear. Amen. Amen. Can I get a better amen? amen? Listen to this. We're to open our ears to God's sayings and close our ears to everything else. We're to open our ears to God's sayings and close our ears to everything else. Amen. That's undivided attention. Now, I'm going to give you one more verse for this. One other thing you could write about that is to say this. I'm going to accept God's word and act upon it, period. I am going to accept God's word and act upon it, period. Meaning what? I'm not going to reason it out. Amen. not going to reason why that's not for me. If God said it, I'm going to live by it. Amen. It's amazing. Go to 1 Peter real quick. Come on, 1 Peter 2. I've got to close. 1 Peter 2. Anytime I ever bring up online or to a believer... Hebrews 10, 24, 25. Consider one another. Stir up love, good works, not forsaking assembling, as some do, and so much more as you see the day approaching. How many Christians know that verse? But they don't live it. They don't live it. I said they don't live it. I believe that verse even told you so. Verse 25 said, don't forsake assembling as some do. Some do. If you're the some that do, I tell you what, you're not walking out what the Bible says. Right. You're not giving your undivided attention. Accept what it says and live it. Right. Accept it and live it. You're giving, your word, you're giving the word that's undivided attention now. Right. Yeah. Can I get a better amen? amen? Instead of laying on the couch watching a football game, yep. baseball coming up, whatever. <coughs> amen. amen. Preaching pretty good this morning, Pastor. Thank you for coming, sharing the word with us, giving us the ingredients for life and health. If you don't want life and health, just ignore what I'm talking about. But I pray you do. Amen. Isn't it wonderful we can walk in it? Yep. First Peter 2. Watch this. This is powerful. Therefore, laying aside all malice, all deceit, hypocrisy. What's hypocrisy? You say you're, you're one thing, but you do something else. Laying aside all envy, all evil speaking. So these would all be bad influences, wrong influences. Watch this. Verse 2. As newborn babes. Now, in this context, he didn't say who he's writing this to that they are. Some might have been. He's, he's referencing to become like one. Even if you're not still a newborn babe in Christ. As newborn babes desire the, underline it, pure. Desire the pure. Desire the Pure milk of the word that you may what? Grow thereby. If indeed you've tasted that the Lord is gracious. Now I have a question for you out of verse 2 and 3. Has anybody here tasted the Lord and seen how good he is? Yeah. Then why would you not do verse 2? If you've tasted and seen that he's good, that he's a good God, and he has good stuff for us, why would you not do verse 2? Why would you not fulfill what he said in verse 2? Why would you not be like a newborn babe and desire, crave the word says? The word desire means to crave, hunger for, long for, thirst for. What? The pure milk of the word. Why? That you may grow thereby. If you're growing, does anybody know what you're growing up into? Life. Anybody know what you're growing up into? Health. Right? If you're growing as a believer, are you going to walk in more of God's life? 
Yeah. yeah. You going to walk in more of God's health? Yeah, because you're growing up into Zoe. Right? What if you're not? Then you're obviously not progressing into the life of God and the health of God. Isn't that correct? What does this have to do with giving our attention, our undivided attention to the Word of God? I'm going to show you. Watch this. Verse 2. 3 again. Verse 3. Have you tasted and seen the Lord's good? Lift your hand if that's you. Then why would you not do verse 2? Why would you not do that? Why would you not crave, long for, I pray all the time over this place, God, fill this church, not with just people, fill it with people that are hungry for you. Yes. Fill it with people that desire to know you. Yes. Watch this. Desire, crave the sincere, or in this context, New King James, the pure milk of the word. The word pure, this is the only place it's used in all the Bible. It's not used ever again. The word pure milk of the word means that it's not mixed with anything else. No mixture. Pure means no mixture. So don't take the word of God in and mix it with other things. Amen. Undivided attention. Don't be listening to all the voices of the world. If you're still listening to all the voices of the world and you are in the word, guess what? You're not desiring the pure milk of the word. You're mixing it. You're mixing it with something else. So here's what it's like back to our recipe analogy, right? So here I got these puzzles. Just reminding you because I'm about to close. <laughs> Joshua wouldn't let me have them, man. He put his hand on them, man. So here are these good tasting pizzelles, right? But you know what? These wouldn't taste near as good as my mom's. What? If I did not do what that recipe said to the letter, right. not mixing anything else with it, right. not adding any of my own ingredients, right. not allowing my wife to add any more ingredients. I'm not, if you mix, if you take the, if you take the ingredients for life and health and mix anything else with it, guess what? No life, no health. Right. You'll get a taste of something, but it won't be like this. Right. Won't be the real deal. Amen. It'll have a funny taste to it. Yeah. You know why? You mix something else in with it. You know why a lot of Christians, even though they've tasted the Lord is good, still have a funny taste in their mouth about things about life and about health? I'll tell you why. They're mixing too much else in. You can't mix anything else in. If you're going to keep mixing other stuff in and not just desire and crave the pure, un, unmixed milk of the word. What, what do you mean milk of the word, Pastor? Take it at face value. Just take it for what it says. If you'll do that, guess what? You're going to grow into life and you're going to grow into health. Amen. Can I get a better? Yeah. Amen. All right. I want to give you one last statement here. Don't mix the word with man-made opinions reasonings or theories don't mix the word with man-made opinions reasonings or theories you got to start doing what you got to start shutting the world out and getting the word in if you do that is the second ingredient to life and health which means do what pastor give your undivided attention to the word of god stop mixing it with others opinions stop mixing it with your reasonings and stop mixing it with the theories of the world and the theories of others. Take the word of God at face value. Here's a way you know. Last word on it. Got to quit. Here's a way you know you're giving the word your undivided attention. Here's how you know. You got to be attending to it, of course. But if you're attending to it, how do I know I'm giving it my undivided attention? Because we could go to this word and look at what you've read and see you doing it. If you give your undivided attention to it, guess what? You're going to do it. You'll live it out. Because faith is simple obedience to the Word of God. Isn't that right? If I give undivided attention to the Word, would I not know? That's good for me. Would I not know what the Word's telling me? That's for my benefit. That's going to help me. That ain't going to hurt me. Isn't that right? See, I now understand more fully why so many Christians don't live the Bible. Do you know why? They don't give it their undivided attention. They're not really hearing what it's saying. Because if they did and you've tasted that the Lord is good, why would you not want more of that? Hey folks, I've tasted Pazell cookies. They're good. I will eat more of them. I will eat more of them. But I'm going to tell you what, that won't happen if I don't do what? Follow the recipe. Amen. If I start mixing stuff in, my own idea, guess what? It ain't going to taste the same. Can I get a better amen? amen. So you got to understand these powerful truths. You've got to tend to the Word. It's got to become priority. Yeah. Primarily epistles. Who you are in Christ, what you have in Christ. But you've got to do what? You've got to be hearing what it's saying. 
You got to incline your ear to hear it. How do you do that? Got to give it your undivided attention. You're going to keep mixing all the other junk of the world into your ears and listening to all kinds of garbage and secular stuff. It doesn't mean you can't listen to anything out there. Some of it's not so bad. Some of it doesn't have a bunch of that in it. But I'll tell you what, a lot of it does. Right? If you're going to keep listening to all those other things that you could close out, you're mixing something in the ingredients that's going to cause you to not experience life and health. Thank God we can keep it out. It's worth it. It's worth it. Because that life not only comes manifesting you, guess what happens? That life starts manifesting through you and in the people around you. This is what makes you the light of the world. If you're walking in Zoe life, how could people not see a light shining from you? They saw that light shining from Jesus. I'm not talking about a literal aura. I'm talking about they knew this guy got something we ain't got. How's he doing these things? How's he walking in such peace? How's he walking in such joy? Wow. How's he do that? Well, child of God, you start walking in Zoe, people are going to see the same thing about you. Amen. You're not going to have a problem being a shining light. No. Amen. Can I get a better amen? amen. Aren't you glad? We pray that you are blessed by the message Pastor Baker shared with you today. For more spiritual resources that can help you in your walk with God, or to invite Pastor Baker as a guest speaker, just go to our website at cffchurch.com. You will find additional teachings by video, audio, and printed resources that will be a blessing to you. May God's very best be yours.